Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm your host for today's episode. Joining me is Andrea Luck, PhD candidate in the Genetics and Genome Sciences section of Michigan State University. Andrea, welcome to the podcast. Would you like to give a brief introduction of yourself to the audience? Sure. Thanks for having me. Um, as mentioned, I'm a PhD candidate at M Michigan State, and I am doing research in social stress in pigs. Right now, we just concluded a project that is using weaning stress as a model, but we're very excited to start working with group house gestating sows in uh, hopefully the upcoming year here. And we're looking to see how that impacts production, but also welfare. Very good. Well, and certainly welfare and production go hand in hand. Um, one of my favorite sayings as a pig veterinarian is you take care of the pig and the pig will take care of you. Um, and I think that's an easy way to help caretakers and owners understand that the, the better we manage our pigs, the better we care for them, the, the better our business is going to perform. That the, that the pig's well-being is somewhat analogous to the business's well-being. And I know you guys are looking at, at resilience, um, and, and I think it, it's always helpful to define terms like that because resilience probably means a lot of things to a lot of people out there. But could you talk to us, uh, Andrea, a little bit about what resilience means to your team and from a research perspective, how you define resilience in a pig population? Sure. So it's a little bit of a complex term in that generally it refers to an animal's ability to either be minimally affected by or quickly recover from a stressor. And when I say stressor, it could be anything. Most traditionally, we've looked at this in terms of disease resilience. Um, some research teams are looking at resilience to heat stress. Um, our team is looking at social stress just because it's inherently difficult for producers to manage because it's dependent on each individual pig's personality type, coping style, their social rank and so on. I think it's uh, important to talk about all the different types of stressors because in my experience, the pig can handle one stress event. Um, but it's the, when I worked for mash offs, uh, Dr. Bradley Walters taught me a term, uh, stackable stressors. Um, and basically, you know, that one plus one, when it comes to stressors doesn't equal two, one plus one equals four. So, um, take that the other way. Uh, one minus one can sometimes have a, a pardon me, two minus one can sometimes have a much bigger effect than what we realize because you get the, you, you get the stress down to a manageable level and all of a sudden the pigs can overcome what little bit of stress is left. Um, specifically with the social stress, Andrea, what time or what age of pig, you know, what production situation are you guys focused in on? So the project we just wrapped up, like I said, was using weaning stress. So the farm that we use has an average of 28 day weaning. And that's, we all know that's a very big social stressor because these piglets, they're being removed from their mother, sure, but then they're also being introduced to these unknown piglets and they're having to establish that social hierarchy. So that event is the stressor we're using as a model for this current project. However, every time we remix pigs, whether it's when they get moved from nursery to grow finished pens, or what we're interested in later is that group gestational housing. So after confirmed pregnancy, if we put those gestating sows in a group, they're going to fight while they establish that social hierarchy. So each of those events is that big social stressor that we're focused on. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes uh, you almost have to sit back and, and laugh at the fact that uh, the the housing uh, requirements that uh, that we're asked of sometimes, we almost have to come up with ways to manage the welfare for the welfare-friendly housing. You know what I'm saying? We're forced into welfare-friendly housing, which we all know comes with a whole bunch of welfare problems. And so we have to problem solve and figure out how can I actually protect the welfare of the animals given these requirements that have been pushed on me by folks that may be well-intended, but really don't understand uh, animal husbandry at the end of the day. Right. Well, the, the big question with welfare and stress, Andrea, is always how do you measure it? Um, we talked about how to define the term resilience, but how do you, how do you come up with a measurement system to, to measure how resilient a pig population is? Yeah, so there's no ideal measurement. Our lab uses serum cortisol. That's a very common measurement of stress in animals. And of course, it comes with its own complications because 
so many different factors can influence cortisol, but for in a research setting, that is the easiest, most repeatable way to get a measure of stress. So that's what we focused on. Um, there's always the option as precision livestock farming is becoming a bigger topic and that introduction of video observation and recording to start looking at different behavioral measures as a way to observe that acute response and then when they return to normal behavior. We're dealing with populations of individuals um, and so variability becomes really important. How much variability do you see in the metrics so far? Um, I know maybe you don't have all the video recording information back, but on the cortisol, do you see wild differences in pig to pig response or is it pretty consistent across the whole population? Yeah, so surprisingly, and to benefit our project, we saw a lot of variation both at the acute stage, so that day of weaning, as well as the recovery. So our recovery value that summarized that change actually had significant variability because we were combining two very variable time points, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, what do we know about the, the variability in cortisol response in other species? Is there work published out there? Um, humans would certainly be interesting, right? Um, but uh, other species, uh, other livestock, other companion animal, is, is there anybody else looking at similar things in other species? So I have yet to come across a paper that looks at variability of cortisol recovery that includes a time point beyond the acute measurement. However, I have seen some papers in trout and also dairy cattle that looked at um, other physiological markers. Um, so your acute phase proteins and also physiological responses such as average daily gain maybe protein content of milk and seeing how those fluctuate beyond the point of the stressor and when those can return. And they were able to see a between animal variability. Well, I think that would be very interesting to compare to your pen performance data as well. You know, your average daily gain of the pen, um, you know, how do those cortisol responses, how do those behavior measurements from the video um, uh, give us the ability or, or not to predict the actual pig performance? And I'd assume that'll be data that'll come out of this project. Yeah, so we did actually collect average daily gain on the focal guilts that we followed for the whole duration of this study. And... I was a little surprised there is no differences between our resilient and vulnerable pigs in their average daily gain either at the nursery stage. So for our farm, that was the four week period post weaning. And then at approximately eight weeks, they get moved to their grow finish pens. And we didn't see any differences at that stage either. Okay. Um, what about uh, the carcass? Uh, we certainly know that the that stress has an impact on protein deposition, fat uh, mobilization, all of those things, right? When cortisol goes up, it's in control of the body. Um, so are you going to get any carcass information? Yeah, so we're actually in the process of analyzing that right now. Um, we had all 52 of our pigs go to the MSU meat laboratory, and we were able to collect all your industry standard measures of both carcass and meat quality. So we have our dressing percent, loin eye area, back fat depth, um, marbling scores, color scores. Also, we did Minolta colorimeter measurements on them, drip loss, and then we'll be doing shear force as well. Excellent. Well, we look forward to having you back once you've got that data to give us an update and help us better quantify this impact of stress. Yeah, I am too. I'm very excited to see those results. Yeah. Well, thank you, Andrea, for coming on the show. Um, and to our audience, thank you very much to listening for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast. If you haven't visited us on our website, please go check out swinehealthblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so that you won't miss out on our next episode uh, next week. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. For Andrea Lutman, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Please have a great rest of your day. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it with me and share it with our audience, feel free to send an email to healthblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to take a look at your research.